blade, that it came down correctly, your head would be sliced off in one clean blow. You would feel your head kind of tumbling towards the basket, but the sensation would almost be as if you're falling. Um, so really, your impulse would probably be to put out your hands to catch yourself. Experts wonder if the guillotine encouraged the vast volume of bloodshed during the French Revolution. As an execution device, it's quite quick and quite painless if done correctly. This is why the guillotine remains an approved method of capital punishment in France until 1981. For nearly 200 years, this device keeps heads rolling. This was a very messy way to die, and maybe people became kind of uncomfortable with that. Maybe people became uncomfortable with the idea of 10, 15, 20 people dying every single day right in front of them. But the physical and social flaws of the guillotine did not dull the theory of an angled knife blade. Today, the angled blades of box cutters are commonplace in household toolboxes, and the angled blades of surgical knives help to save countless lives. While the French create a revolutionary device to take off heads, the Spanish unveil a technological upgrade for strangulation. Turning to a proven screw drive technology, the Spanish engineer a machine that delivers an unbelievable pain in the neck. They call it the garrote. Even a well-meaning executioner, a well-meaning design can possibly go wrong and possibly inflict more pain than the original design. The first garrote is a simplistic way to strangle a condemned prisoner. The executioner brings a loop of rope over the head and ties the ends together as he twists the cudgel stick. The more he turns the stick, the greater the pressure on the condemned's neck. Ultimately, the prisoner dies from asphyxiation. In this example, we are using the simple concept of torque, which is a force applied from a distance. And the bigger your lever arm is, the more force and torque you can apply to whatever you're trying to do. And as you can see right now, I am really working this. This is quite a bit of force. The reason why this is so hard is its load is being transferred into an area that is the entire distance of this rope. So if I'm applying, say, 200 pounds on this of torque, it's being applied all the way around the rope. It's not like a point load that you would have in the center of the neck, which means you'd have 200 pounds going through the center of the neck. The more area you can disperse your load, the harder it is for you to apply a load. The problem with this device is that it requires a really strong executioner. A garroting is basically a slow motion, horizontal hanging. But it's human hands powering the execution, not gravity. This kind of death is not pleasant for the victim. Uh, generally, a black hood was placed over the victim's face to protect the crowd from what would happen. I mean, think about any time you start choking. The face is gonna turn red, it's gonna turn purple. More than likely, as the person asphyxiates, the limbs will start twitching, they'll start struggling. This is not a pleasant thing to watch. Ironically, during the Inquisition, Death by garroting is considered merciful. Even if you had converted to Catholicism, you did not escape your death sentence. Instead, you were offered a presumably quicker and easier way of execution rather than being burned alive at the stake. After the garroting, the inquisitors would burn the lifeless body of the newly converted. It was a proven technique, it obviously worked, but it was due only to the power of the executioner and obviously not a very humane way to go. So when they wanted to design a more humane way of executing victims, they decided to simply upgrade the design and make it mechanical. In 1852, the Spanish unveil a kinder and gentler garrote. It promises to make the work of the executioner easier and the death less painful to the condemned. The modern garrote replaces the original rope and stick with metal screw technology. 
Now by twisting a handle, the executioner sends a massive screw through the post of the garrote and into the victim's neck. The sharp bolt should separate the top two vertebrae and sever the spinal cord. Death is supposed to come instantly and painlessly. When the executioner would come up, he would twist this, applying a torque to put pressure into the back of his head and separate his actual spinal column from his head. You have to transfer your work energy from a human into a mechanical device. This becomes a lot more efficient than the actual rope they used. Now, simple engineering tells us that the smaller the lever for the screw, the harder it is to turn. It takes more force. This is extremely easy and fluid. The further you go out, the easier it gets. You go into the center. It doesn't get that much harder, but you can definitely tell it takes more force. The theory is that the screw spreads apart the vertebrae and neatly snaps the spinal column, rendering the condemned paralyzed and unable to feel pain. But executions by garrote don't always go as planned. Some accounts describe the bolt emerging from the mouth or bursting straight through the neck while the victims are still very much alive. A simulated neck and spinal cord will test how the screw enters the condemned during a garroting. Even depending on how tight this is, there's still probably going to be some room for movement. There's still room for error. So, so it's starting to enter and there's not really any resistance yet. This is still fairly easy. This is where the screw would be going through simply the skin of the neck, kind of pushing the person up against that steel collar because really, you're not gonna get any resistance until it starts hitting that spinal column. The problem with that mechanism, however, is that contraction of muscles may deviate the screw one way or the other. You end up, wind up going into a painful nerve root or just to soft tissues, um, the muscles here, the ligaments that are all very painful. So all you do is cause excruciating pain for the victim without killing them. And it would probably just continue to go all the way through, pierce through the front here, and not even paralyze the person at all. It, it was a good idea in theory, but it's, it's someone missed the mark. In practice, it just did not work the way it was intended. So as an attempt to use technology to make this form of execution more humane, it failed miserably. There's just far too much room for error here. There's a reason they don't use this to kill people any longer. As horrible as this might have been for the condemned, this is a very ingenious device. Technology that this is based off of has revolutionized modern times. Today, leverage-powered screw mechanisms create the force necessary to open bank vaults and lock down submarine hatches. As the modern era progressed, engineers designed humane death machines. It didn't take long before they mechanized one of the world's oldest forms of execution. This device began as just a rope with a specialized slip knot. But by mechanizing it, engineers gained more precise control over an execution. They called this machine the Long Drop Gallows. The long drop gallows exploits gravity to deliver a precise neck-breaking force to the condemned. The long drop's idea was that it would apply just enough force, just enough drop to just snap the neck. A broken neck sounds nasty, but if you're a convicted horse thief, bank robber, or murderer, it's one of the least painful ways to go. Your neck will snap, you'll lose blood pressure and lose consciousness. Brain death will eventually happen a few minutes later, but you won't be able to feel it. The neural transmission between the brain to tell the heart to work and to tell the, the uh, lungs to breathe is shut off. That will be like switching off the computer. It's a light switch, the switch is off, and the, and the individual is literally dead. The long drop gallows eliminates the one-size-fits-all approach to hanging. This device requires different sized people to drop at different rope lengths. By basing the drop distance on the victim's weight, the long drop avoids the gruesome mishaps of decapitation and slow strangulation. 
if you're a really heavy